Hello and welcome to my video for programmable logic in practice and this is the April 2015 video. So this is dealing with USB super speed 3.0 on FPGAs and in this video I'm going to show you the um, this is sort of the Cypress development kit for or Super Seed Explorer kit for their FX3 so if you have the article you can see the setup I've got uh, so this is the kit here and I'm going to be using the total phase beagle 5000 for looking at the traffic and seeing um, seeing all that stuff so as a little bonus uh, this the circuit seller issue this is in actually has another article by uh, one of the, or the author of a really excellent book detailing all this stuff uh, so I'll, I'll encourage you definitely to check out the circuit seller for April 2015 if you're interested in USB 3.0 so to begin with if I plug in the the board. Um, let me plug it in while I have the, the total phase logger running here. So I'm just going to stop and restart the capture. And if I plug in the board, make sure it's triggering here. So it, the data, if you're used to USB 2.0, uh, there's a lot of similarities. There's still some ideas of endpoints and whatnot. Um, some sort of interesting thing to get the higher speeds, we'll see this idea of link credits, which are lower layer uh, buffers. So there's four buffers that get switched between. Uh, so at the application layer, if you're used to getting higher speed USB 2.0, you know, you know, reading a buffer and immediately trying to return it. And a lot of USB 2.0 uh, high speed Devices will have ping pong or even multi-way buffers where it's automatically uh, filling them up. So this moves some of that idea even to a lower layer. So to really get access to uh, super high speed uh, devices, you have to deal with how, how you get that data through everything. But let's say what I want to show you here is just how easy it is to use uh, Python with USB 3.0 and you don't have to know any of this stuff. So if I plug in the device, what I'm going to get is, let me just pull up here. So Cypress gives you a example application and called streamer. Sorry, everything's coming up on my other screen here. Here it is. Uh, and if we start this, what you'll see is it just starts sending data to and from the device. And it's giving you a data rate of about 440. Um, megabytes per second so the USB 3.0 is about 5 gigabyte bits per second sorry and 3.1 pushes that even higher but there's a lot of overhead due to encoding and protocol so I think the realistic bandwidth you could theoretically achieve is somewhere in the 4 to 500 megabytes per second not the you know 5 gigabits per second would be 625 mega bytes per second, uh, but you can achieve that in real life because not all of the bits are useful for your application data. Uh, anyway, if we switch back to the total phase window, I can stop this. Uh, you can see where all of the data transfers were happening. And we can see, for example, if we highlight over each one, um, you can get an idea for what the transfer rate for each of these was. So you can see at the bottom here, uh, a lot of them, oops, around that 430 megabytes per second. Um, so that's for just one of these little packets. And uh, the you know little packet, you can see each transfer here can be quite long. If we expand it, uh, we can actually see each of the transfers oops, for each of those link buffers. Come on. So if I expand this guy, so you can see, you know, the total, this was a 3K transfer, and we can see within it a number of smaller transfers. So that was 1,024 bytes, 1,024 bytes, and 1,024 bytes. And this is using those different uh, lower layer buffers. All right. So now the question is that you can sort of see how that works. How do we do this in Python? So if you want to communicate in Python, I'm going to use a spider. So this, if you haven't used Python, basically what you can do is there's something called WinPython, and you can download you know the 
32-bit, 64-bit, whatever, WinPython. Um, so here I downloaded it. We need, there's a USB driver or sort of interface for um, WinPython called PyUSB. And so PyUSB lets you talk to just random USB peripherals. So I'll have links to all of these and it has some examples. So to install PyUSB, what you would do is you go to the Win, wherever WinPython ended up being installed. So I've just installed it to see WinPython. You can open a WinPython command prompt and uh, you can use a command to install the, the PyUSB. So pip install PyUSB. Uh, in my case, I've already done this, so it's gonna say, oh, already satisfied. Uh, in your case, it should install the, the USB interface stuff. So the second thing you need to do is we need to be able to actually force our device to use a different USB driver than the Cypress one because the, the Python code can't talk to the default Cypress driver without adding some of our extra stuff in. Uh, so we can make this really easy by downloading, if you get the libusb win32 releases, uh, what you need to install is this libusb win32 devel filter. Uh, once you install this, it'll give you in the start menu of your computer um, some options to run what's called the filter wizard. And so, oops, if I run this libusb32 filter installer, it gives me an option, install a device filter. And what this lets me do is take control of some USB device. So I'm gonna scroll down to Cypress USB streamer example, hit install, and hopefully that works. Let me just do this. And if that works, um, as well as in the, the libusb uh, tools that were installed, there's this test win program. And what this should do, and you might have to hit refresh, is it's gonna list all the devices that we do have control of. Um, and if it doesn't appear, you know, unplug, replug the device, and then hit refresh, or we'll give it a second. And so this is the Cypress device now. So now what we can do is switching back to Python, we can just do a really simple command here that we gives it the vendor ID and product, and we can see if we find it. So in this case, I'm printing uh, details. So if if you did not successfully do that driver install or you specified the wrong you know vendor and product ID, it would just print none because it didn't find anything. So in this case, we have the device. Um, and you can see all of the, the details of the device. So in this case, the Cypress FX3, this is just from the USB descriptors. Um, so what we want to do is we just want to loop in a reading, you know, from this bulk in uh, endpoint, which is all of that streamer example was doing itself. So we're going to, I'll leave that. And I'm going to use this set configuration command. Uh, so this just enables the, uh, the default configuration. And in theory, we can just do device.read. So we we're going to specify the the address. So this is the text address of the endpoint. So 0 times 8, 1. And you can see um, the size or buffer, and we're not going to deal with the timeout. So I'm just going to specify to get 1,024 bytes. Um, so you can do data equals. Let's just try that. So in this case, there is no exception or anything if we print data. Uh, you can see it's just it's just sending AA repeatedly. Um, all right, so the error here was that if I do these uh, this reading really slowly, so oops, let me just unplug and replug the device, and I can read one chunk of data from it, and I can continue to read data, uh, but if I try to loop it too quickly, then the underlying the lib USB chokes out. And all I needed to do was set a default timeout here, and then I can have a whole bunch of reads in a row. Oops. And this 
requested resource error is because I'm just rerunning the script. And uh, the old one's still in memory, so I just unplug and replug the device to force that. All right. Um, so let's say we want to read, I don't know, 100 blocks. And see how quickly that can happen. So let me unplug, replug the device. And I'm going to use the logic analyzer to give me a better read on the transfer speed. So we could also do this in Python through timing it, but let's just do that. Oops. So there we go. So that should have just transferred 100 blocks. So yeah, we can see all, all the data transfer there. Um, so each block was transferred quite quickly. So the only real question was possible overhead of the um, Python itself. And to do this, we can add some timing around uh, the call to all those functions. So let's do that now. And to do this, I'm just going to use the date time uh, module in Python. So actually, I'm from date time import date time. And so I'll just take a start time before this um, and end time at the end. Oops. And you can see how long that took. USB time, and what do I want? End time minus start time. All right, so let's try this. I'll unplug, replug the device again. Oops, I didn't wait long enough. Try again. Oh, shoot. Come on. There we go. Um, okay, so that was about 17 milliseconds according to this. So what we can look at is how much data was this? So 16384 bytes, 100 times. Um, so whatever this one sum bytes divided by 0.17. And what did we end up with? One, two, three. All right, so in this case, we're doing about 100 megabytes per second. Um, so that's not bad for, as you can see, we're doing all this in Python uh, really quickly. I'm just using the default USB 3, uh, you know, app, the streamer app that's on that FX3 chip. And uh, yeah, that's for a lot of applications that may well be fast enough. Um, so you can play with some of the buffering times if you, you know, really need faster speed. And of course, move to doing this in something like uh, C. But for you know, most applications, this may well be fast enough for just downloading some data that the you know, super easy development uh, offsets that slightly lower performance than we were seeing in the streamer app. So if you have questions, feel free to ask. I hope you enjoyed this really brief overview of using um, USB 3.0 and Python together. Thanks.